the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation. And it shall be a statute forever in your generation. <laughs> The Eternal Light. The National Broadcasting Company and its independent affiliated stations present The Eternal Light, a program which comes to you under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Our dramatic program today, adapted by Virginia Mazur, was written by winner of the 1966 Nobel Prize for Literature, Nellie Zucks, and is called Eli, a Mystery Play. When Nellie Zox was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature last December, jointly with the Israeli writer Agnon, few people in this country had ever heard her name. This happy few were scholars, for the most part, who had cherished her work over the years, reading it in the original German and translating it into English as a labor of love. Among these scholars is Professor Harry Zohn, who is here with us today to introduce you to... Eli, a mystery play by Nellie Zox. Professor Zohn. Eli, a mystery play about the sufferings of Israel, is perhaps the most noteworthy among Nellie Zox's 14 dramatic works, which include experimental dramas, cultic plays, dramatic happenings, and scenic studies. Written with great visionary fervor in a few nights in 1943, after Nelly Zucks had received crushing news about unspeakable atrocities in Nazi Europe, the play may be regarded as the fountainhead of Miss Zucks's subsequent literary production, foreshadowing particularly her first collection of poetry in the Habitations of Death and exploring some of her characteristic themes, such as the motifs of flight and pursuit, the hunter and his quarry, the cosmic aftermath of the Holocaust, as well as containing her recurring metaphors of dust and sand, the phoenix rising from the ashes. Eli takes place in the destroyed Polish ghetto among the few survivors of the carnage who live very self-consciously on the sites of past horrors and try to do some physical and psychic rebuilding. The past and the present, the dead and the living, the actual and the symbolic commingle wondrously. In 17 loosely connected scenes, the tragedy of an eight-year-old shepherd boy during the war is presented through flashbacks and is interwoven with a legend of the 36 just men, the Lamet Vovniks, those who support the invisible universe, who have the gift of unbroken vision and of seeing cosmic connections, who forever restore the balance between destructive and curative forces in the world, who are destined to wear out Israel's wandering shoes. One of these elect is Michael, who is, appropriately enough, a shoemaker, plying the same trade as Jakob Böhme, a German mystic of the early 17th century whose thought has influenced Nelly Zucks, particularly his insight that the Godhead and all things are characterized by an antithesis, the harmony and discord between good and evil, light and darkness, gentleness and ferocity, love and hate. The boy Eli, who has raised his shepherd's flute heavenward in his anguish, has been murdered in his nightshirt by a member of the German occupation forces. Michael's search for the murderer actually provides the only continuity of action in the play. When Michael has tracked this soldier down, vengeance is not for him. Seared by the radiance of Michael's Baal Shem-like glance and gnawed at by Eli's tooth, the German breaks down and literally disintegrates, whereupon Michael, his earthly mission completed, goes to his reward. In a letter written in 1946, Nelly Zucks expressed the hope that after the war, Jewish artists would heed the voice of their blood so that the age-old springs might flow again. Eli is a poetic, dramatic outpouring from just such a spring. 
Nelly Zux has written a play rich in allusion and full of woe and wonder, one that brings into play the techniques of mime, music, and the dance. She intended her drama, Eli, as a contribution toward conciliation among men, not as a work of hatred. This is indeed how it has been understood by young Germans, who not only respond to the Goethean insight that new life blooms in the ruins, but appreciate the indestructibility and regenerative faculty of the Jewish people, which many of these young people have seen at first hand on the soil of Israel. The scene is a ruined village in Poland. The time is shortly after the Nazi invaders have laid it waste. It is also no time, no place, or any time, any place. A country of the mind where the drama of the hunter and the hunted plays itself out, endless and forever. Three women are picking their way along a rubble-strewn village street. One cradles in her arms a child's torn nightshirt. From the laundry, the laundry I come from washing the garments of death, from washing the shirt of Eli, washing out the blood, washing out the sweat, child sweat, washing out death. To you, Samuel, will I bring it, your grandson's shirt, the shirt of Eli. It was your son, Samuel, on the morning when they fetched him, tore him from bed from sleep. Raleigh, his wife, too, they tore from sleep. Drove her before them through the Kugasa. Drove them both. Eli and his nightshirt ran after his parents, his pipe in his hand. The pipe he had played in the fields to lamb and calf. And you, Grandfather Samuel, ran after your grandson. And when Eli saw, saw with the eyes of an eight-year-old, how they drove his parents through the Kugasa, the Kugasa, he put the pipe to his mouth, and blew it. And he did not blow it as one who pipes to his cattle or in play. He pointed the pipe to heaven. He piped to God, did Eli. A soldier marching with the procession looked round and saw Eli piping to high heaven and struck him down with his rifle butt. A young soldier he was, very young still. And Samuel took up the corpse. Grandfather Samuel sat down upon a milestone and was dumb. Was dumb. But why was not Michael then at hand to come to the rescue of Eli? Michael was in the house of prayer, in the burning house of prayer. He checked the flames. He saved Yossela, saved Dayan, saved Jacob. But Eli is dead. Yes. Michael came a minute too late. A minute too late. Look, tiny is the eye of my needle with which I have just been sewing up the torn seam of Eli's shirt. Why do you think he came too late? He whom no enemy detained? He took one step into the side street. A single step. There where the house of Miriam once stood. And then he turned round and Eli was dead. Eli... What's that? I am a washerwoman. I've made the lie. I've washed. I've rinsed. But today at the laundry, there where the seam was torn on Eli's shirt, there it took hold of me. I must ask Michael the shoemaker. A shoemaker, yes. But Michael has the unbroken vision. Not like ours, which sees only fragments. From end to end he sees. Here come the children. It must be school has let out. From a ruined alley, the children swoop down upon the marketplace, jostling past the women, like starved pigeons come to pick among the rubble. This was a house here. This was a hearth. Here's a saucepan still, burnt black. Here's a colored ribbon. Perhaps it was a cradle ball. Perhaps it was an apron string. Who knows? Here's a skull cap. Who wore it? A young man or an old one? Or a boy? Who knows? Look! 
Joshua has found bones. The school teacher said today was the day of Michael's wedding years ago. The day they snatched Miriam, his bride, from him. Before the blessing of the candle. Let's play. What shall we play? We'll play wedding and candle blessings. And I'll be the bride. And I'll snatch you away. No, I don't want that. Here is linen. And here is a piece of wood charred only at one end. Now I've got a baby. A baby with black hair. And now I'll cradle it. Sleep, baby, sleep. My father watches the sheep. The moon is a shepherd. Give me your baby. I'll throw it on the rubble. There it can cry. No, let it be. Miriam, its name is. The little stars are the sheep. I'll get sleep, baby, sleep. The children wander off, time past and time present coalescing in their minds. To them, the dead Miriam, killed in some old pogrom, and the doll Miriam, created out of a burnt stick and a scrap of cloth once worn by one of the victims of the new killers, all are one and the same. This moment of being is all and forever. But what of Michael, the shoemaker with the unbroken vision who sees from end to end? Little shoe, little shoe. You trod so lightly, Miriam. The grass is rose behind your feet. What constellation saw your death? Was it the moon, the sun, or the night? With stars or without? Big shoe, man's shoe, the shoes of Isidore, the pawnbroker's shoes, heavy shoes. A worm is stuck to the sole, a trodden worm. The moon shines on just as when it saw your death. Children's shoes, children's shoes, trodden over on the inside, lamb's wool sticking to them. Eli. Eli. (laughs) Samuel, I pray you to help me find what I am seeking. I seek the hand into which the corruption of this earth has entered. I seek Eli's murderer. Samuel, old grandfather Samuel, let me ask your dumbness. Was he shorter than I and taller than you, the murderer? His hair, was it blonde? His eyes, blue, black, gray? Oh, Samuel, how many millions of men has the earth? Murderers like Cain. Look, oh look, the candle throws the shadow and your dumbness speaks, speaks out of Eli's flute. Very young, still he is, very young, his murderer. The nose is broad, its nostrils quiver with bloodlust. The eyes have the pupils of a wolf, the mouth is small as a child's. Thus Faces are compounded in dreams. Water poured from the invisible. It is gone, Samuel, dumb Samuel, but it burns in my eyes. Until I find him, it will get between me and everything on this earth. I go to seek the murderer. And so Michael's wanderings began. Up and down the ruined landscape, in every village, every marketplace, he searches every face, reading it like a map for some trace of the murderer. But it is not killer he finds, but quarry. What place is this? This is the place where Baker Isaac of the Shuffling Gate was struck down because of a sugar pretzel baked with forbidden flour. This is the place where they took away my eyes. 
I wanted to see my love once more. But then they took away my eyes. And from that time on, I counted midnight. This is the place where in a hole in the earth I bore my child. In a hole in the earth I bore it. In a hole I suckled it. Death took its father. Me he did not take. Saw the milk in my breast and did not take me. They said because of my jerking shoulders they hate me. They said because of my perpetual smile they hate me. They said because of this heap of stone which once was my house they hate me. I see. See the beginning of your jerking shoulders, Simon, when with Abraham you dug the well of the seven olds in Beersheba. I see. I see the beginning of your smile, Amon, in Horeb, planted in the seven elders to sprout again, sprout in the wandering dust of the lip. Stones are stones. Earth of paradise in them, but in greed destroyed. But they do not know the beginning, not the eternal beginning. And that's why they hate us. That is why they hate us. I wander. I wander. Everywhere I seek the murderer who murdered Eli, the springs of hate, which were given Israel to drink. He who goes gathering death moments needs not a basket but a heart to fill. The fingers pointed in this direction. Murderers betray the murderer in the end. I seek the murderer who murdered Eli. How peaceful is this spot. The crickets sing, the jay is called by his mate. The cow has a primeval face of a creature just stroked by its creator's hand. You come from over there? Across the frontier? A Pole, are you? Or even a Jew? I had a pipe like that, I'd be piping day and night. That sounds like someone crying. Like Isidore, the tradesman, as we drove him out of the village. Oi, he said. Oi. And there he lay in the ditch. It's from a dead child, this pipe. From a dead child? From a boy who was murdered. Who was murdered? As his parents were being driven to their death, he ran after in his nightshirt. On this pipe, he piped to God for help. To God for help? Then a soldier struck him down. I must be going now. It's supper time. There's honey for my bread. Will there be a shoemaker in your village? I have come a long way, and my souls have long since left my uppers. Next door to the inn garden is the shoemaker shop. Come along. Michael, you are now my journeyman, a Jew, saved, and now lodged with me. True, great wrong was done you, but perhaps you are for us like shoes of former times, of long ago. They fitted nobody. Good leather, but unsuited. No use for our climate, for the desert, perhaps, for the Holy Land, perhaps, where the Isidores hawk their wares differently from us. But, of course, as things went with you then, no, that we didn't want. Not like that. Not like that. Uh, since Abraham wandered forth from Ur, we have spent our efforts to build our house toward him as others build facing the sun. 
True, many have turned themselves in the opposite direction. But there was a boy, Eli. Uh, who's that coming there? Who's that? Are my shoes ready? But my journeyman's just working at them. Uh, this sole can't be patched. It's torn up the middle. Make me a new sole, then. Father, this is the man who had the pipe. There it is on the flower pot. Oh, let me play it. You don't play strangers' pipes. The pipe. I want to play the pipe. Always wanting something. One day it's a blackbird which used to come for scraps and then disappeared. Another time it's the old sheepdog which ran across the rails and was run over. Everything begins with wanting. Even the earth there in the flower pot. And the hides there from which the shoes are cut. The pipe. I want the pipe. I'll buy you a pipe. When you get it, all the children will follow you and give you their toys. No, this pipe. I want this pipe. No, I tell you, no. Come along or I'll give you something to cry about. The nose broad. Its nostrils quivering with bloodlust. The eyes with the pupils of a wolf. The mouth as small as a child's. Murderers like Cain with death spitted on their ten fingers. Eli, I have found him. I have found your murderer. Everywhere. Do you hear how it rattles? The black horse is climbing and showing its teeth. The calves drink with their teeth and fleck the others with blood. Do you hear it, wife? Here in this room, teeth rattling, the whole house rattles. All the trees go walking. All the trees go walking. Lift up their roof feet and walk when I climb. All the shadows go walking. Come, dear Hurst. Cloth, cover up the white moon teeth for me. Wasn't it a milk tooth which dropped from his mouth with a pipe? Wife, wife, the milk has teeth, teeth. Who's knocking? Who's there? They say you once killed a holy child. Stuff and nonsense, all children are holy. Your child is ill. Very good. Oh, the doctor it is you are. There's a smell of it in the air. Camp air, softer of flesh. The child is dead. Our child is dead. If he hadn't thrown his head back, I shouldn't have struck him down. The milk tooth wouldn't have fallen out with the pipe. But that was contrary to order to throw the head back. That had to be corrected. And where did he pipe to? A signal through the air, free of all control. Help, shoemaker. The milk tooth is growing out of the earth, beginning to gnaw at me right through my shoe. My feet are crumbling, becoming earth. Where's the order in all this? What's become of order, world order? I'm alive, I'm not dead, not hung, not burned, not thrown, living into the earth. It's a mistake, a mistake. It, it's crumbled, crumbled away. I'm a stump sitting on the sand that a moment ago was my flesh. The air opens out in circles. The embryo grows in the womb. On its brow glows the primal light. Child with the light of God, read in the hands of the murderer. My hand, my hands, my hands are crumbling. On the horizon, a wound is opening. Bleeding mouth of Samuel, open your dumb mouth.
The womb dissolves in smoke. The primal light floats at my brow. I see far. The crumbling one, his eyes become holes. The light seeks out other mirrors. I see through the holes into the skull which frames that world which you, as at a command, have packed inside it. As in a soldier's knapsack. There it lies, twitching. An insect star with wings torn off. Under my feet it jumps up. From my hand it plunges down. My heart pours out something. Footprints of Israel. Gather yourselves together. Last earthly moments of Israel. Gather yourselves together. Last moments of suffering. Gather yourselves together. The air is new. Gone is the smell of burning. Gone is the smell of blood. Gone is the smell of smoke. The air is new. Eternal Light presentation today, Scenes from Eli, a Mystery Play by Nellie Zachs, was adapted for radio by Virginia Mazur. Cantor David Putterman sang the liturgical introduction. Featured today was Leon Janney as Michael. Others in the cast, Martha Greenhouse, Abby Lewis, Vera Allen, Susan Towers, Rosa Gottlieb, Alan Howard, Gil Mack, Donald Buca, Guy Rep, Joseph Julian, Roger DeCoven, Clifford Carpenter, and John McGovern. The narrator, David Loden. The flutist, Al Howard. Our guest commentator was Professor Harry Zone, chairman of the Department of European Languages and Comparative Literature, Brandeis University. I invite you to join us next week when the Eternal Light will conclude its series honoring Nobel laureate Nellie Zox with Nellie Zox, Poet of the Holocaust by Virginia Mazur. This is Jerry Damon. The Eternal Light is directed by Kenneth McGregor and presented weekly under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. NBC Radio Network.